So here in this question, we have a diagram which shows triangle P on a grid, and then we have the triangle P, which is the right angled triangle sitting there on the grid. We're told that triangle P is rotated 180 degrees about zero, zero, so about the origin, to give us triangle Q. We're then told that triangle Q is translated by this vector here, 5 minus 2, to give us triangle R. And we're asked to describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle P onto triangle R. So if we're looking to map P onto R, we firstly need to work out where triangle Q sits so we can work out where triangle R is going to be. So the mapping from P onto Q, we need to look at first. So when P is rotated by 180 degrees about the origin, it gives us triangle Q. Now we can rotate it 180 degrees in either direction because that would just give us the same thing because 180 is half of 360, so half of a full turn. So the rotation clockwise or anti-clockwise will just be the same transformation in this case because it's 180 degrees. But I'm just going to do it clockwise because it's just, just a bit easier to work with. So if I had a bit of tracing paper right now, I'd put it over the grid, draw in the origin and draw in the triangle P, and then I'd rotate it by 180 degrees, so two 90 degree turns of the tracing paper, clockwise or anti-clockwise, and then I'd draw in triangle P after it's been moved through this rotation of 180 degrees. However, we don't have the tracing paper to work with, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. But I'm just going to focus on this one point here. And as we can see, it is the point 1, 2. And when that point is moved through 90 degrees about the origin, I'm just going to start with 90 and then move it through another 90. It's just a bit easier to work with. It goes from 1 along and 2 up to being 2 along and 1 down. So 2 minus 1 is going to be this point here which was this point originally here. So that's rotated through 90 degrees to get us here. And then looking at this side of the triangle, this side still needs to be kind of on top of the triangle. So that side is going to be rotated around 90 degrees to over here. It's still of length three. So I can just draw that in there without having to look at any other points. Similarly, this kind of top here, has been moved around all the way to here and it must be going down from this point by one square. So I can draw that in as well and then I know that this hypotenuse side is just going to be drawn in here between those two points. So that's a rotation of 90 degrees about the origin and then I just need to do that again so I can focus on this point again. It's at 2 minus 1 rotating it round to here this time we're going to have moved around to minus one, minus two. So when we rotate this by 90, it's moved to here. Similarly, this kind of flat side here still needs to be on top. So that's rotated round to this point here. It's going to be these three squares below the original point. I'm just kind of using my intuition to look and see where the point's going to have been translated to and what looks right when the line's been moved round. Also, this line here, if we're rotating around the origin, it needs to have moved around the, to the bottom of the shape. It couldn't have moved up here. So we can just draw in the one square length there. And then finally, join those two points together for the rotation of 180 degrees. And then just looking back at P, this does look like it's been rotated through 180 degrees to get this shape over here. And this shape over here is going to be the triangle Q. So I can label that up there. So we're halfway now to finding where the triangle R is. So we need to basically take Q and translate it by this column vector here. So this means that Q has been shifted five places to the right. So positive 5 in the x direction, and then negative 2 in the y direction, so it's been shifted 2 down. So the way we can do about this, 
we, the way we can do this is we can break it down into two steps. So firstly, shifting Q5 to the right, so five in the positive X direction in, on the X axis, and then two down in the Y direction. So doing the shift of five in the X direction first. If I look at the points separately, this one point here can be shifted one, two, three, four, five points to here. And then looking at this point, one, two, three, four, five. And as you can see, that line is just going to be filled in there. We then know this other point has to be here because the triangle is going to be the same orientation, the same way around, the same size, just shifted, translated to the right. And then finally, for this translation, we just need to do the minus two, so two down in the y direction. Again, I can just look at one of the points, this point here, shift it two down to get here, and then we just draw in the same triangle again. And then we just draw in the same triangle again, so it's three down, one across to the left there, and then this hypotenuse side up here. And that is triangle R. So now we need to describe fully the single transformation that maps P onto R. Now thinking about the types of transformation, if it were to use, if we were to use a translation, we wouldn't be able to do it in a single transformation because P and R are kind of a different orientation. So R kind of looks like an upside down version of P. Similarly with a reflection, Reflecting P in a line, for example, parallel to the X or Y axis, would never map it onto shape R. There'd always be some kind of translation needed. So realistically here, we're looking at some kind of rotation. And we know that R is in the same way up and the same size as the shape Q, which was a 180 degree rotation of P. So we're looking at a rotation of 180 degrees to take us from P to R. However, we know that the centre can't be 0, 0, the origin, because that would map P onto shape Q. So we know that we're looking for a rotation of 180 degrees, but about a different centre. So then looking for that centre, the way we can do that is by finding the midpoint between two of the same points on each triangle. So this point here is the same point as this point here on triangle R. So we can find the midpoint of the line between them to find the center of the rotation. So if I just draw in a line between these two points. So we've moved from one on the x axis all the way up to four. And then the midpoint, the point halfway between one and four here is going to be this point here, which is two and a half. So the centre on the x-axis is 2.5. And then similarly for the y, we've moved from positive 2 all the way down here to negative 4. And halfway between these two points is just going to be minus 1. And we can see that that is the point where x is 2.5. So that's worked out well. So the y point the y value of the centre of rotation is just minus one. So this point is the point here, which is halfway between the same points on each triangle. And that would work the same if we use this point and this point, joining those two together and finding the midpoint, that would also give us the centre of rotation. So to get the marks here, all I need to write down is a rotation of 180 degrees about the point 2.5 minus 1. And we need to make sure we describe it fully, saying that it's giving the number of degrees that the rotation is and the point from which it's about. As for how the marks are awarded, the first mark is for a method to find the position of Q. So for Q being drawn in the correct position here, with its coordinates minus one, minus two, being this point here, minus one, minus five for this point, and then minus two, minus five for this point here. And then the second two marks are for saying that it's a rotation of 180 degrees, uh, about 2.5 minus one. 
and that is how the three marks for this question are awarded. Alternatively here, to get the marks you could describe the transformation as an enlargement by a scale factor of minus 1 about the same centre of 2.5 minus 1 and that will still get you the marks here, it's the same, it's one, it's a single transformation that gives you the relationship that maps P onto R so you'll get both of the marks for this as well. We're then told that under the transformation that maps triangle P onto triangle R the point A is invariant and we're asked to write down the coordinates of point A. So an invariant point is a point which doesn't change under the transformation. So the point is going to be the same point before and after the transformation has taken place. So seeing as this has been a rotation of 180 degrees, any point that isn't this centre of rotation that we found here is going to move. The only point that won't move, the point that will stay the same and is the invariant point, is the centre of rotation because we're rotating around the point. So all other points around this point will be rotated, they will be moved, they'll turn to different points, but this singular point here won't be affected because it's the point around which everything else is being rotated by 180 degrees. So this, the centre of rotation, the point of rotation that we calculated here to be 2.5 minus 1 is going to be the invariant point A. So I can just write that down in the coordinates box here. And that is how we get the one mark for this question.